Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be checking out the upcoming Transformers Studio Series Bumblebee movie, The Lux Class, Cybertronian, Wheeljack, and finally, honestly, it's just so awesome to actually get some of these flashback Cybertron figures, as in my opinion they had some of the best designs that we'd ever really seen for the live action movies in a very, very long time, and Wheeljack here was by far one of the best designs that I believe translated on screen, and I think Travis Knight did an absolute terrific job in taking that original G1 design and of course making it more realistic for the live action movies, and finally Hasbro are in fact doing these figures, so in this way we are expecting to see Cybertronian Wheeljack, Cybertronian Brawn, and even a rumoured Cybertronian Bumblebee movie Soundwave, of which I'm super super excited for, and if any of them turn out half as good as Wheeljack here, we're definitely in for a treat. Now before this guy's release, of course we did see B127 as well as Cliff Jumper, and if you've seen my reviews on those guys, you guys know that I wasn't all that impressed, it was certainly a mediocre mould at best, but Wheeljack here, despite never actually transforming in the movie, is so awesome in both vehicle mode as well as robot mode, so without further ado, let's get straight down to it, here we have Wheeljack Jack in his Cybertronian vehicle mode. Now in this video we'll start off in vehicle mode, go to robot and then towards the end of the video I will also be showcasing transformation from robot back to vehicle so be sure to stick around to the end of the video for that transformation tutorial. So you can see here that Hasbro appear to have been taking inspiration from the Fall of Cybertron video games as well as the actual B127 alt mode and I think they've done a fantastic job. You can see here that super awesome stylistic futuristic look that we've got going on for the front of the vehicle, very similar to B127's design and you can see some of those classic G1 Wheeljack traits such as those green and red stripes of which I think have turned out super super nicely. I love the transparent plastic that we've got going on towards the front so you can see they're decked out in a really awesome smoky blue and we've got some awesome red paint apps actually here towards the top. Now the colour of white plastic that they've cast him out of is a little darker when in comparison to say the likes of the Siege Jetfire although I actually think it suits this character perfectly as of course considering he's on Cybertron it would stand to reason that he would be a little more darker, a little more smokier when in comparison to a pristine figure such as Jetfire so honestly I think it looks awesome as we just spin our attention here to the side you can see those Cybertron wheels also look fantastic, completely transparent with some really nice white rims actually applied over the top and you can see we've got that classic G1 Wheeljack green strip going along the side of the vehicle and you can see all of these super awesome panel lines. Now as we turn our attention here to the back, honestly this is the only area which isn't that great looking but to be fair even this isn't all that bad and as we just turn our attention here to the underside you can see some of the transparent areas such as the feet, although the plastic here is incredibly thick so I don't really have any qualms about this cracking or breaking over time just as long as of course you are cautious when transforming him. Now Wheeljack comes with one accessory, that being this Cybertronian blaster, which once again, much like the character himself, we only really got a very brief glimpse of in the movie. So to be completely honest, this is probably the best look that not only we're getting for the figure, but also for his weapon. You can see this has been completely cast out of a gunmetal grey, but the sculpt work is fantastic. You can see very mechanical in terms of design. I think the sculpt work is awesome. And in order to actually attach it here for vehicle mode, you can see we've got two ports here at the back that this simply does just peg into place. And in my opinion, this guy looks awesome. He can in fact glide along the ground with absolute ease. And just overall, if you've seen my B127 and Cliff Jumper review, you guys know that their vehicle modes was the only redeeming aspect about them. And considering that Wheeljack here follows a very similar style, I am in love with this. I really love these Cybertronian takes on some of these classic characters. Now, without further ado, let's bring in some comparisons. So, starting off firstly here with a deluxe comparison, we've got Wheeljack slap bang there in the center alongside both B127 as well as Cliff Jumper. And despite never actually transforming in the movie, I think he suits this style really nicely. Hasbro's Kara definitely did a terrific job, and it makes me super excited to see as to what Brawn and Soundwave will in fact transform into, but just bringing Bumblebee in here for a closer look, you can see in regards to scale, they are roughly exactly the same. I really do like, once again, some of those style traits which have carried over from Bumblebee, such as that slanted design that we've got going on towards the front of the vehicle. You can also see the headlights do follow a very similar shape, and then also the wheels too, although I actually think Wheeljack's wheels are a little better than Bumblebee's, just as of course you can't see those awful mushroom pegs. But in terms of scale, they are roughly the same size and look really, really awesome next to each other. Here for another deluxe comparison, I thought that it would be interesting to compare the live-action movie version of Wheeljack Jack to the newest G1 inspired version that of course being this Earthrise Netflix release and once again you can definitely see some of those classic G1 traits carried over here into the Cybertronian version. Most noticeably would be of course those red and green stripes. Of course the actual white colour palette too is very similar and to be fair some of the design elements are also similar such as this almost spoiler that we've got going on here and I actually think it's a really really nice evolution. So definitely a very cool figure and for those of you who are a fan of the G1 series then you're definitely going to know straight off the bat who this guy is even in his vehicle mode just down to the simple fact that they've nailed the colour scheme. And turning here for some Voyager comparisons, we've got Wheeljack alongside the Cybertronian Starscream, of which is yet another smashing figure, and you can see that he definitely does follow a very similar style in design, and honestly, I really hope Hasbro continue pumping these characters out. It would also be incredibly interesting to actually see them come up with some concept ideas, as I would love to see as to what an actual Bumblebee movie version of Megatron would turn out to be, as of course these characters are really heavily influenced by their G1 counterparts, so I think Megatron also could look really, really awesome. And finally here for vehicle mode comparisons, we've got Wheeljack compared alongside
alongside the Bumblebee movie Optimus Prime, a shot that I really hope we can actually see in the upcoming Transformers Rise of the Beasts movie, as honestly it would just be super cool to actually get Will Jack in a proper live action movie. But once again, I think Jackie looks awesome alongside Prime. If I just show you a side by side shot, of course, considering Prime is a Voyager, he's a little bigger, but I actually think the scale is pretty spot on to what we would see from the movie. So turning to transformation from vehicle into robot to begin with, you're going to want to come here to the windscreen section and just gently pry this piece up. We can then turn our attention to the back, take these elbows and shoot those backwards just so that you disengage these tiny tabs from these slots as that will allow for a little more flex when actually manipulating the legs around this section so that we can then take this, snap that into place and then bring this section here forward. You're going to want to come to the front of the vehicle, disengage this which will split the legs into two halves and then we can take this panel and in fact just fold this here out to the back and I guess we could also straighten out Will Jack's head which looks fantastic. We can then turn our attention to the side, take this wheel and just manipulate this section upwards. I will be honest though and say that these panels do have a tendency to pop off as they are merely held in via clips. So definitely don't apply too much pressure to those although they do clip on just as easy as they do come off. We can then come to this side and of course repeat the same process. So just hinge that there to the back, take this panel here, snap that out of place and then of course snap that section out of place. We can then bend the feet down like so. You're then going to want to in fact actually bend at the knee joint as we're going to take this panel here and in fact actually shoot that forward, rotate this around and then recompress this as this will form the front shin of wheel jack. Once that's completed, you're then going to want to shift the wheel in a position like this and then we can take this panel, rotate this section here all the way around and you can see how we've got a tiny little tab that will just slide into that front slot and then this tab will effectively just rest there on that back slot. Of course, come to this side and repeat the same process. So bend at the knee, take the shin panel and pop that forwards, rotate around and then compress it so that it sits flush with the rest of the leg. Come here to the wheel and just push that there to the back and then take this panel here, rotate this section around once again until it does fill in that slot and then we can just snap that tab and that slot in together. You'll then want to turn your attention here to the upper section of wheel jack and these sections are effectively just going to rotate out to the side so that we're going to in fact actually fold the wheels inwards so of course come to this side and repeat the same process fold that in that will then allow us to bring this section up which will then also allow us to rotate here at the waist so that the front is now facing the back now once that's complete you are then going to want to hinge and click this section in we can then bring this forward and you can see how we've got two tabs here and here that shall in fact peg into these two slots so just snap them in there we can then come here to the torso plate and snap that in there and you can see two tabs here and here that shall peg into two slots on the underside of this transparent plastic. So just align that up appropriately, just like so. And we can then straighten out the elbows. And then for some finishing touches, take these sections flare them out to the sides and then we've got the Transformers Studio Series Bumblebee movie Will Jack fully transformed up into his astonishing robot mode and my goodness does this figure look awesome I really hope that this is in fact the design that we can see continue going forwards for the live action movies as I think the designers did a terrific job honestly he looks really really impressive probably one of the best Bumblebee movie figures that we've gotten so far and it could be down to the simple fact that seeing as Bumblebee turns three years old this year Hasbro and Takara have had quite a bit of time to actually work on these designs and honestly I'm just so glad that they did take as long as they did as I think this guy looks really really awesome. Now bringing Will Jack in here for a closer look honestly the attention to detail in that head sculpt alone looks fantastic. Now as mentioned beforehand we really only got a very brief glimpse of this guy in the movie I believe it was something like less than two seconds so I really do think this figure in some ways is the best look that we've gotten of this character design yet and honestly it looks so so awesome. So you can see here for the head much like we saw in the vehicle mode it has definitely got some G1 character traits carried over and I think it looks awesome so you can see we've got some really nice metallic blue highlights going on for those ear pieces of which of course are illuminated when this guy did in fact speak we've got the silver mouthpiece as well as those piercing blue eyes and I actually think the attention to detail is really really awesome honestly the panel lining detail looks fantastic and the entire head from what I can tell has in fact been painted out of this really nice metallic gun metal even turning here to the back you can see not only has that been sculpted but it's also been painted really well and the same can also be said here for the neck piece whilst not painted we've also got some terrific mechanical detailing and then as we turn our attention here to the torso this just looks super super awesome so once again we've got that red and green color deco with the Autobot insignia slap bang there in the center. I think the shoulders look really awesome. We've got these wing pieces, of course, once again to harken back to that G1 design. I think these two have also turned out really nicely as we just spin our attention down.
down to the forearms. You can see some really nice mechanical details. I'm not a huge fan of these pieces that we've sadly just got hanging off the arms, although they are in fact detachable. So if you didn't like them that much, you could simply just remove them as they are merely held on via clips. And just to show you how that looks here from a front perspective, you can see incredibly clean. So if you wish to just display this guy in bot mode and you're not all that keen on in fact actually keeping him in one piece, then they are incredibly easy to detach. And then as we just turn our attention down to the lower section, once again, some really nice looking sculpt work going on here. I think the thighs all look really awesome. You can see how we've got some really nice sculpt work actually here for this hip joint. And then we've got a darker gun metal here for the thigh panel. I think that looks really, really well done. You've got all of the various different armored layers going on here for the shins and the feet, of which I actually think look really, really impressive. And then as we just spin our attention here to the back, you can see that much like the movie design, the wheels do in fact actually compress within the torso, which is really cool. You can see some nice sculpting and detailing here to this spinal piece. And once again, I just think he cleans up really, really nicely. So overall, very, very impressed with what I'm seeing in terms of this Wheeljack figure. And as mentioned beforehand, I'm just super stoked to see how that upcoming brawn and sound wave turns out as this guy is really well done. Now, as we turn to articulation, the head here is on a ball joint, so this can look left to right as well as up and down to actually a pretty decent range. And of course, can also tilt side to side, which is really cool. We do, in fact, get ball joints here at the shoulders, of which are incredibly stiff. So these can rotate the full 360, hinge out to the sides. And I do, in fact, actually like how you compose these wing pieces to make it look as if though they are, in fact, staying in one place, which is cool. We also do get a bicep rotation due to transformation. We get a double joint here at the elbow. Sadly, no form of wrist rotation. And that is something that I definitely think they could have done. Or maybe it would have, in fact, actually obstructed the vehicle mode panel. But here for the waist, we do in fact get a waist rotation, which of course can go the full 360. The legs are on ball joints, so it can kick forwards that far, as well as back to that far, and of course out to the side. Sadly, not to 90, but that's still a pretty decent range. We also do get a rotation here at the thigh, as well as a 90 degree bend there at the knee. And finally, the feet are in fact on ball joints, so can pivot forwards, backwards, as well as can also rock ever so slightly side to side and he also in fact actually has some of those War for Cybertron ports here on the soles of the feet so I guess he is also compatible with some of those other weaponizers so overall a really really well done figure I think this guy's turned out a lot better than at least I was expecting and I'm sure that many of you guys are going to be really happy with what Hasbro and Takara have come up with for this guy so very quickly bringing in the blaster just so you guys can actually see how he interacts with this sadly we can't recreate the scene where Wheeljack does in fact actually hold it with both hands which is a little irksome it would have been awesome if we could have in fact actually got this hand actually grasping this under section but as it stands I think that's a really cool looking weapon certainly blends in with the overall aesthetic and from that very brief cameo that he had in the film this definitely does look accurate to the weapon that we saw him use and if you didn't wish to actually display it in the hands we can of course detach it turn our attention here to the back and in fact just tab it here and you can have this guy with the weapon slung over the back which also I think is a really cool idea especially considering he's an inventor it would stand to reason that he'd have various different weapons actually attached to the backpack but definitely super super awesome looking figure here for some deluxe class comparison We've got Wheeljack once again slap bang in the center alongside Bumblebee as well as Cliff Jumper, and you can see that he's in fact the tallest out of these guys. And one thing that I really like about him is despite him sharing a very similar design in terms of alt mode, he cleans up so much better than these guys. So as we just turn here to the side, you can see there is literally no back kibble on him at all. Whereas here for B127, we have that massive backpack. So once again, I do wish that maybe Hasbro could have found a way to put more of this junk in the actual torso, much like we're seeing here with Wheeljack. But so far, out of these Cybertronian deluxes, I definitely think he's the best one we've gotten so far, and I'm pretty pretty sure that you guys would all agree with me in saying that. And of course, comparing the live action movie version of Wheeljack to the Earthrise and Netflix version, you can definitely see the similarities. And I really love how they were able to harken back to that original G1 design, yet still keep it contemporary in order to actually fit in with the movie verse aesthetic. I think it's really cool. And once again, is an approach that I really hope we can see going forward for these movies, as I think this guy looks really well done, as so did pretty much all of the Bumblebee movie cast. Moving on here for some Voyager comparisons. Once again, we've got another wicked figure that in the form of Cybertronian Starscream. And much like Wheeljack, I really loved what they did with this character design and you can see that he is of course significantly bigger than Wheeljack as he really should be and for one final comparison here we have Jackie compared next to of course the Bumblebee movie Optimus Prime and much like all of the comparisons I've showcased so far I think he looks wicked of course with the leader of the Autobots so before I wrap up this review of course we've got to do the reverse transformation so to begin with for this you are in fact going to want to just compress the elbow joints along the side of the shoulders we can then turn our attention here to the back and just collapse these wing pieces you're then going to want to come here to the front disengage this panel and of course just bring this forwards and we can in fact actually fold this section out and then of course this green section can reverse here to the back we can then take the head and rotate it so that it is in fact facing the side disengage these tabs from those slots bring this section here to the back and in fact just snap that like so rotate here at the waist so that the front is now facing the back and then we can indeed in fact actually take this here and rotate all of this up just like so and then of course come to this side and repeat the same process. So just 
fold all of that in. I wouldn't recommend actually securing this into place yet as of course you still want a little bit of flexibility with this when actually tabbing the legs into place. So just set that there to the side for now. We can then disengage that section. You'll want to come here towards the shin, pull this forward, rotate that back into its place that we saw in vehicle mode and just compress that there along the side. We can then take this panel here, rotate this all the way to the back and you can see how this tab will in fact peg into that slot so just align that up like so take the foot here straighten this section out and then bring this wheel up and over and this too should just slide into place and then of course clip into this side panel come here to this side and you guys guessed it repeat the exact same process so just take this shin piece rotate this to the back straighten out that knee joint and compress that there into place take this disengage that section rotate this piece around and just snap that there like so we can then straighten up the toe take this panel here slide that down once again snap that there into place take this section here and just push that in between the legs and then we can in fact actually connect that and then you're going to want to once again flip this panel out snap this section here into place and then come here to these arms finally snap them into place and then shoot these elbow joints forwards and they will also lock there and then take these pieces angle them out to the sides and then we've got the transformers bumblebee movie studio series cybertronian wheeljack fully transformed up into his cybertronian vehicle mode and once again looking really really awesome so some final thoughts here for this transformers studio series bumblebee movie cybertronian deluxe class wheeljack overall i'm super impressed with how this guy's turned out as mentioned beforehand he actually turned out a lot better than i was expecting i think hasbro and takara did a smashing job in actually giving him a concept alt mode as of course we never actually see him transform in the movie it really suits the aesthetic set by of course Cybertronian Starscream, B127 and Cliff Jumper, and I think it looks really well done. I love those G1 design traits such as the red and green stripes. I think the overall colorization of plastic looks awesome and I love the transparent plastic that we've got going on towards the front of the vehicle. It looks incredibly futuristic and really does harken back to some of those older Fall of Cybertron video games. Transformation is really fun, not too complex nor too simple and is incredibly refreshing and I think that's why I love these figures so much as they are essentially G1 designs just updated to fit the more contemporary movie-verse aesthetic and I think they look killer. In robot mode he looks fantastic Fantastic. definitely captures the appearance of the character that we saw sadly very briefly in the Bumblebee movie although hopefully that's corrected in the upcoming Transformers Rise of the Beasts movie as Wheeljack is definitely a fan favorite one of my favorite characters and I really hope that we can in fact actually see more of this character design on the silver screen I think in terms of bot mode he looks really awesome especially where that head sculpt is concerned once again love the G1 traits such as the wings on the shoulders the really awesome ear design of which has been highlighted with metallic blue paint and overall the mouth guard looks really really awesome as so does the torso region articulation for a deluxe class 2 is pretty impressive although I would have loved to have actually gotten some wrist rotation but once again that is just a minor critique and I also think he comes with a really awesome Cybertronian blaster and he looks fantastic alongside some of the other Bumblebee movie figures that we've gotten released so far so overall if you're into G1 you're into the live action movies then this is definitely the figure for you as I think it's a perfect blend of the old and the new and once again is really the direction that I hope the movie verse can in fact take going forwards I would love to know down in the comment section below on what you guys think of this Cybertronian Wheeljack is it one that you'll be adding to your collection and like me are you just even more hyped and pumped for the upcoming Cybertronian characters such as Brawn and of course Bumblebee movie Soundwave. I would love to know your thoughts down in the comment section below and as always I thank you guys all so much for watching until my next review I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.